Good afternoon. Whether you're thinking about starting your first job or you're a veteran of professional pursuits, you may be asking yourself, how do I have a fulfilling career? And this is a fantastic question to be asking, not just once, but repeatedly throughout your career. But let's begin with a few clarifications. What is a career? The traditional model of a career is very linear. You start out getting a job at a low level, you climb the ladder, and eventually you retire. And this can be very stable and very rewarding. But it also puts a lot of pressure on you at the beginning. What if I pick the wrong job? What if I pick the wrong field? What if I'm doomed to spend the rest of my career not enjoying what I'm doing every day? There are alternatives. Let me tell you a little bit about my career path. I grew up wanting to be an engineer. I loved solving problems, and my father was an engineer, so I felt like it was natural. I also liked to build things and you know, get involved with my hands, so I studied mechanical engineering, and my first job was as a fluid systems and thermodynamics engineer in the petroleum field. I then moved on to the aerospace field, where I continued thermodynamics, working on military aircraft and missile systems. But the company that I was working for was experiencing a lot of corporate problems. And I was really intrigued by these problems that affected the corporation globally, that dealt with people, that dealt with softer issues, but also much more complex issues than the engineering ones that I was being given to solve. So I said, all right, well, how do I get the opportunity to go and solve those kind of problems? Because they seemed much more interesting to me. And I realized I had to do a little more preparation. I wasn't quite ready. I had to go back to school and get an MBA so that I could become a consultant. Consultants get to attack these problems from a very young age and are operating in a boardroom environment right from the get-go. So I went off and I got an MBA, and immediately I was thrust into boardrooms tackling these large global problems. And this was fantastic. I was very fulfilled. I enjoyed what I was doing. But an opportunity came along. A client that I was working for came and offered me a job to head up their strategy and corporate mergers and acquisitions in their Asian business. And I thought, wow, that's fantastic. I would really like to do that. So I grabbed that opportunity, and I moved to Asia, and I started acquiring companies and developing strategies and solving really big problems. They wanted me to come back to the US and continue doing that work after I was finished here. But at that point, I really enjoyed the Asian theater from a business context. The, the richness of business problems, plus the slight chaos from not being a very uh, developed market the way that uh, the US and Europe are gave a lot more opportunities to solve problems creatively, and I really enjoyed that. So again, I looked around for opportunities, and I found a private equity firm that I was able to join, and was faced with a numerous different types of problems, from managing donut companies, to chicken companies, to pharmaceuticals, to education, manufacturing, all sorts of different things. And I thought, wow, this is really fulfilling. I really enjoy this. But I started to think, maybe I want to own something, build something from the ground up. So I left the private equity firm, and I started a venture capital firm. Venture capital invests in very early stage companies and helps them to grow from basically nothing to being a functioning enterprise. And I did that, and I really enjoyed it. Wow, this is really fulfilling. I'm really happy. I'm on my way to success. But then I started thinking, you know, these problems with these very small companies, they seem a little bit repetitive. And you know, maybe, maybe I can go back to what I was doing at the beginning of my career and solve these global, large-scale problems with large companies. So I looked around for opportunities, and I was able to join another consulting firm. And I thought, this is fantastic. I was immediately back in boardroom, solving the toughest problems of the biggest companies. And I thought, oh, this is, this is really good. Um, and so that, that's where I am at the moment, along my path towards success, trying to manage my fulfillment. But what exactly is fulfilling? What does that mean? In the context of this discussion, Fulfillment is the set of circumstances that makes you happy on a daily basis. It's the type of work that you're doing. It's your interaction with your family. It's your coworkers. It's where you're living. It's how much money you're making so you can afford the type of lifestyle that you want. All of those things contribute to your daily fulfillment. It's important to look inside and find out what exactly drives that. What do I find important? And what makes me happy on a daily basis? And then put yourself in a situation where you're able to achieve that. Now, identifying your fulfillment is fantastic, 
but it's not something you do once. Fulfillment can change over time, and you have to keep asking yourself the question and keep refreshing that view. An example, when I was a teenager in California, cars were a big deal for, for, for teenagers, and I went to a car dealership, and I looked at a brand new Pontiac Trans Am Firebird. This is a fantastic dream car for a teenager in California. Uh, it, it was a car out of a, a popular television show from the 80s that I used to watch as a kid. And I thought, wow, this would be fantastic to have this car. But there's no way that I could afford it. And I guess I, I, you know, I looked a little, a little down, and the salesperson came over to me and said, yeah, what, what do you think of this car? I said, oh, yeah, this is a, this is a great car, but I'm never going to own this car. And he said, oh, nonsense. Work hard, save some money, we'll get a great program to put you in this car. And I said, no, it's not that I won't be able to afford this car. I definitely will work hard, I definitely will have money. But at the time when I can afford this car, I'm not gonna want this car anymore. I'm gonna be older, I'm gonna be more mature, I'm probably gonna want a sedan, something with a lot of airbags. Uh, you know, not, not, a, not a Firebird. So I knew I was never gonna have that car, and for one time, a car salesman had nothing to say. The next thing you need to, to look at is, what does success look like? What is the goal that you are trying to achieve at the end of your career? Fulfillment is what keeps you happy day to day. Success is where you want to end up. And again, this can change over time. This is not uh, a destination that you have to be fixated on and achieve at all costs. In fact, achieving success often doesn't bring any satisfaction. It's being on the path toward that success that makes you happy on a day to day basis. So you have to know what that looks like and chart a path toward it. Knowing about success is like having a compass that points north. You never really intend to get to the North Pole, but you need that compass to make sure you're going in the right direction. Without the compass, you can't achieve any satisfaction with knowing this thing that I'm doing today is getting me closer to where I want to be. So make sure you, you understand your fulfillment. Make sure you know what success looks like. So now you just have to work hard, right? No fulfillment, you know success, just working hard. Well. Working hard by itself is not what you need. You need something else as well. You need luck. So success happens at the intersection between preparation, that's your hard work, and opportunity, and that's luck. And knowing where that opportunity is allows you to prepare and put in the hard work so that when you intersect with opportunity, you're ready to capitalize on it and achieve success. And you say, well, that zone of intersection is not very big. Well, you know, it looks like I'm doing a lot of hard work. I'm only achieving a little success. How can I up my chances of being more successful? And you can do more preparation. All the things that you're doing, all the studying, all the, all the hard work, all the introspection, everything that you're doing, you could do more of. And the odds are, you'll overlap more with opportunity, and you'll achieve more success. But you may not have the capacity or the capability to, to spend all of that time doing more preparation. So you can also be more targeted in what you're doing. And you can say, where are the opportunities and how can I better prepare to get there? How can I prepare in a more focused manner and be more accurate in what I'm doing so that I have a larger zone of overlap with the opportunities that I'm trying to see? It's maybe networking, researching your topics better, understanding where the opportunities may lie. And then you will uh, achieve success. Now some people say, if I'm meant to be successful, I'll be successful. It's in the stars. Fate will, will take care of me. And you don't do much preparation. Now, maybe that's true. You could be very lucky, do a small amount of preparation, land right in the center of all your opportunities, and become successful. But from a mathematical probabilistic standpoint, I wouldn't bank on that. And I think if you don't do much preparation, even when opportunities come by, you're not going to be prepared to take them. So make sure you do your preparation, be diligent, look where the opportunities are gonna be, and make sure you prepare. So you know what's fulfilling, you know what success looks like, you know where the opportunities are, and you've done all your preparation. Now it's easy, you just go through the motions. You turn out to see the world, and it's a jungle. And you're out there and you say, well this road doesn't look very smooth, and I don't see where I'm going. What do I, how, how do I make progress? How, you know, where is north? Where is my success? There are a few things that you can do to make things more tangible. One is don't fixate on success that is at the end of your career. Break down the path into smaller bite-sized chunks. Things that you have visibility to, 
that you can measure, little waypoints along the way that you can have small victories and celebrate those small victories. Make sure they're taking you in the right direction, but make sure that they're tangible and that you can get there. The next thing that you can do is make sure that you're in situations where there's a positive correlation between effort and reward. That means that for every incremental step of effort, you get more reward. And you may see things like this happening. If you study harder, you get a better result on your test. And that's a bigger reward for you. But imagine a situation where that wasn't the case. Imagine if you worked hard or not hard, and you had the same reward. You wouldn't have much motivation to put in any extra effort. You would simply just, you know, do the minimum, I guess, and you'd get a reward and be guaranteed. You wouldn't be very happy. You wouldn't be, feel challenged. You wouldn't feel like you were making progress. Similarly, even if the reward was potentially very high, if it didn't correlate with how much effort you put in, you wouldn't be very, very motivated. You would say, yeah, I'm just waiting. Maybe I'm going to get a great reward. Maybe I'm not. But it has nothing to do with what I'm doing. So you're not motivated. So make sure that you maintain a positive correlation between your effort and your reward. Now, that sounds good, but how do you do that? One technique is to own the issues that are all around you. When something goes wrong or not exactly the way that you wanted them to go, it's easy to blame other people. To say, oh, well, my company isn't doing that well because my boss has made silly decisions. Rather than placing blame on others, think about what could I have done differently? What could I do more of? Or what could I have done better? Or what could I have done less of? To try to sway the outcomes in a more positive direction. So for example, if it's your boss who's made a bad decision, what could you have done to influence him or her in a better direction? Could you have done more research? Could you have done a more compelling presentation to him or her and say, here's the data that you need to make the best decision? If you own those outcomes, then you will have a positive correlation between your effort and the reward, and you'll stay motivated. Now, as an aside, it's interesting to, to think about humans' inherent dissatisfaction. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, there's probably a small piece of you that says, am I really achieving as much as I could? You know, maybe there's some other job that would have been better. Maybe I could be living in a different place. The grass is always greener on the other side. And that's OK to, to, to accept that. Throughout evolution, we have had this, this inherent dissatisfaction. Those of us that were the most dissatisfied were motivated to try to improve our situation. And those that had the capability and the skills to be successful were able to pass those skills on to the next generation. But they also passed on that dissatisfaction. That's what initially drove them to try to improve themselves. So over the millennium through evolution, we have, been, we have inherited those skills, but also this inherent dissatisfaction. So when you're in a situation you think, you know, this isn't the best situation, maybe things could be better. Take a step back and realize this is OK. Don't get depressed. This is part of the human condition. Realize that dissatisfaction for what it is and use it as a catalyst for positive progress rather than something to get depressed about and say, oh, I'm not happy. I'm stuck in my situation. Own the situation, correlate effort to reward, and work your way out of it. So what do you need to do in order to have a fulfilling career? The first thing is figure out what's fulfilling to you. It's going to change from time to time, but be honest with yourself and try to put in place the elements that make you happy on a daily basis. The next thing is understand what success looks like. Chart a path toward that success. That also is OK to change. Accept that. It's not a problem. But know where it is so that you're making progress in some direction. It's the progress that's going to make you happy. Identify where opportunities are going to be and prepare to intersect with those opportunities. Be diligent in your preparation so that you're always ready when opportunity comes knocking. Stay motivated by correlating effort to reward and own the issues around you. All of these things will maintain your motivation and keep you progressing toward a fulfilling career. Keep in mind that a career is a process and it's something to be enjoyed. These concepts resonate with me and have helped guide me through the twists and turns of the career that I've had. Hopefully some of them are helpful for you as well. Thank you very much.